beautiful sport of pure destruction. Exciting, inspiring and humbling. Somewhere between horrible and amazing. In the Robot Wars arena, frankly, anything goes. The intensity, the action, robots that are designed to beat the crap out of each other. I've been watching Robot Wars ever since I was a kid, and I was devastated when it was cancelled back in 2004. But recently it's made an unlikely comeback. It all started in San Francisco back in 1992, when some bright spark decided to strap a chainsaw onto four wheels. And we've never looked back. But what exactly is the appeal of smashing a lump of metal into another lump of metal? Who better to ask than former Robot Wars world champion Ed Hoppet from Team Storm? Hey! Stephen. Hey Steve, Ed. Welcome Ed. to the Storm Technology Centre. Thank you very much. AKA The Garage. Talk us through what we have on the table here. It all looks very interesting. So we've got various bits of Storm 2 sitting on the table here at the moment. We're in the process of getting the machine ready for a hopeful Series 11 of Robot Wars. You know, we've got the spinning disc weapon which we've done some work on. We're going to be able to self-write with this in place so we can fight you know, those flippers that this year we weren't able to go and take on with the spinner. Um, this is the lifting arm, the classic classic Storm 2 weapon, um, four bar lifter. And there's a few more surprises that are, that are hidden in the, in the workshop um, for the next series of Robot Wars. Robot fighting is this moment where kind of like art meets technology meets design meets sport. It's this melting pot of experience, careers, dreams that just creates the most amazing spectacle. We got into Robot Wars um, watching it on TV in the old days. Uh, it was six o'clock Friday night uh, at university, and after about three or four series of watching the show, he just got to the point where he said, "Look, we've got to put our money where our mouth is and have a go at this." I mean, you know, how hard can this really be? Turns out it's really hard. So, so for us, the basic process of designing a robot um, when we first built our first attempt was to go crazy. Uh, we wanted a robot that would run both ways up, that would crush things, pick things up, lift things, that was invertible, that was four-wheel drive, that would push things. And we managed to achieve all of that. Unfortunately, it was terrible at all of it. So when we built Storm 2, the design process was about singularity of purpose. We identified what was needed to win, and we built it out from there. Tim, the driver. Yes. What kind of skills did it take to uh, drive something as big and as bulky as this. So this is actually one of the smallest robots you'll see out there, but ultimately, yes, this is 110 kilos. Driving this around an arena, you have to be able to predict what's going to happen with an object that size. It's keeping that constant attention in there, keeping an eye on if it's a one-on-one -on -one fight, on what your opponent's doing. If it's a multi-way fight, so you've got three other robots, it could easily be you're busy trying to take on something over here and a big spinner comes up behind you. You don't want to be playing around with that. Surely it's a bit demoralising once. <laughs> Spend all this time, money, development on a robot yeah. to smash it against another person who's also done the same. It's not demoralising, it's great fun. That's what we do. If we, if we just got depressed by it all the time, we certainly wouldn't do this. Storm 2 was the right robot that appeared at the right time. In nine months, we went from having never appeared on the series to being world champions. So the community behind the scenes is probably the most important bit of the sport. The explosion of the internet, Facebook, social media has made it so much easier to connect and collaborate with other teams around what you're doing. And that community has just become stronger and stronger and stronger. What would be my top tips for building a robot? Uh, don't. And I needed no more encouragement to start designing my very own robot. But first, I wanted to find out a little more about how the hobby has stood the test of time. My next port of call, therefore, was in the heart of the beast. The obvious choice for any budding roboteer. Gloucester Leisure Centre.
Although the show was amazing, it wasn't actually what I came for, but rather the incredible people behind the scenes. It's called the two-headed death flamingo. We've got two heads, two pecking beaks that sort of grab and tassel with other robots. And then we've also got wings that fold out at the start of the fight and make the whole thing about two and a half meters wide to sort of control them and bring them into our beaks of doom. Um, would you like to talk us through through the workings yeah. of, uh, of Donald Thump? So it's obviously we're spinning the big bar. This is, I think, 16 kilos of uh, steel driven by a belt, driven by the big 16 horsepower LEM. Um, we've got a big switch, just mind the jeans, ignore the jeans, it's a bit <laughs> unprofessional really. Are they a permanent feature? They're a permanent feature, yeah, they hold the batteries together. How much, uh, how much can this lift? If I, if I stood on this flipper, how, far, how high up would I go? Well, we've got about five tonnes of force on the ram, so we can lift probably about a tonne on the end of it. So that's probably been enough to throw you straight through this roof. Perfect, well I won't be doing that anytime soon. I always saw it on the telly and thought, that looks like so much fun. And as soon as I tried it, I realised that, yeah, it really is that much fun. The community is vast, and we look at it as we're, we're one big family. If everyone just left themselves to themselves, we wouldn't have much left at the end of it, and we need a whole team to pull together. So someone might borrow something, somebody might offer some help. You know, when things weren't on the TV, these are the people that kept it alive. So without, you know, the ones that we have here this weekend, there wouldn't be any robot fighting. People go, oh, you spend hours and time and money on it and then it gets smashed up and broken. Why do you like that? And we all go, I don't know. I'm not really sure. But there's just something about having something this big and this powerful and putting it in with other things that are as big and as powerful. It, the, the smashy bit becomes less and less every year and the sort of the community and the having fun with your mates in a leisure centre becomes, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, it really is a very close-knit community, and we wouldn't be doing this still if we didn't get on so well with everybody else. But before I could get too caught up in all the excitement, it was time to unveil my robot blueprints. So this is my robot design. Um, as you can tell, it's, it's perfection at its peak and completely flawless. I just feel sorry for the other robots up against it, really. Um, let's see what the uh, Fighting Robots Association um, forum think of it. That's certainly a good design for your first featherweight. It's possible to build this in a weekend. Challenge accepted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hi there. Hallelujah. Hi, Stephen. Nice to meet you. I'm Rob. 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 Hello, Alistair. I'm the driver. Alistair. Yeah. Come to build the robot. Fantastic. I've brought, brought around all my robot gear. Um, okay. just, just ready to get started, really. All right, beautiful. Let's do it. <laughs> You bought your bits, it's fantastic. We're going to talk through them just a little tiny bit. Yeah. Your controller, fantastic controller, this one. Um, it just works. So this is the receiver. This gets all the information from... The return of Robot Wars kind of kick-started me into starting Combat Robotics. And I've been sort of doing it on and off ever since. Combat Robotics gets so competitive so quickly. So when you're in the arena, you can be someone completely different. Uh, give a man a mask and he will show his true face. That's much the same as robot fighting. Give a man an RC controller and a big robot with a massive weapon on it, you're gonna see just how destructive they can be. Don't do it. Try a sport that's safer. Play football, go watch TV, play cards. It's dangerous. Rob wants something that just hits something as hard as possible and send it into space like some sort of, like some sort of cannonball out of, uh, well, out of a cannon, obviously. So that's powered on its own. Yep. Mm -hmm. the, the, the battery supplies the power to these two speed controllers. Yep. And then they provide the power and sort of the um, uh, when when the power goes onto the, the motors and the wheels. Yeah. That's, That's how happens. simple it can be. Right. What would happen if it did fail? Um, loss of limb, life, mm. blood, yeah. sweat, tears, ambulance. With the threat of imminent death looming over me and planning <clears throat> underway, it was high time for a montage.
After two days of blood, sweat, and pretending I knew what I was doing, the robot was finally complete. 9.2 kilos. Something or other of torque. And 300% kick ass. This is the Westminster Warrior. Seems to work, let's fight it. So here I am at Maidstone Leisure Centre with the Westminster Warrior. Um, seen the competition and it looks quite tough, so hopefully it'll come back in one piece. Fingers crossed. Having seen the brutal form some of the robots were in, and one of the machines leave the arena in a puff of smoke, it was fair to say, nerves are running high. Hours of planning, construction, and preparation all came down to just three minutes in the arena. And despite my best efforts, it didn't exactly start well. I lost the wheel! But with the wheel reattached, I was ready to rumble. Here we go. Dream over. <laughs> and I'm going to need to change the two side plates on a new top plate, make sure the electronics are working again, and find the link, which is somewhere in the arena still. Uh, there's a chance this could blow up, so uh, I'm going to do this with a bit of caution. It's alive! Theoretically, it's still working. It's just in bits. Um, whether we get it in the ring again or not is, is anyone's guess, but I'm going to get it again. And with the help of the amazing robot community I've heard so much about, we began fixing what was left of the Westminster Warrior in time for the next show. This is the Westminster Warrior version 2. Um, got it working with a lot of help from a lot of people. But um, here we go, it only goes 
only goes right, but hopefully all the other opponents are going to go right as well. Determined to go out in a blaze of glory, there was just one thing in my mind I had to do. just as badly. Actually, no, it didn't go as badly as the first one. It didn't go as badly as the first one, but, um, yeah, it didn't go well either. The wheels fell off again. Uh, what happened was, basically, it was so awesome it imploded on itself. So um, it just destroyed it. No, really, um, they, they, they got it smashed up here. There's a massive hole here. The, the motor's at like a right angle. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty mashed up, but we flew the flag for Westminster television production. The crowd loved it. I loved it. It's been a great day. Despite being 450 pounds out of pocket, my brief experience as a roboteer was amazing. I really felt that even just for a brief period, I was welcomed into the family and witnessed the incredible community behind robot fighting that has kept the sport going for just shy of 20 years first hand. Behind what would seem a quite violent hobby is an amazing mix of amateurs, engineers and even rocket scientists that all have one thing in common, fighting spirit. How, what, do you, what do you think of it? It looks a bit broken. Broken. Broken, yeah, I, I'll give you that. Nick's fixing, I think. <laughs> how, how did it do? Like it's, it's it, it span around in a circle. Perfect. A bit of super boo, no yeah. problem. Yeah. Um, I really um, liked how we actually battled and all that. A bit of super glue, be fine. Look. Yeah. See, I like your optimism. There you go. Yeah. How can you make it better? Uh, you can put like an axe on the side. Flippers would be wicked on that. Like if this lift up, that yeah. would be wicked. Looks very battered. 